that's a whole interesting process to me. Like these massive. So you like you got these massive three D printers. It's oh no, we're we're tiny. We're really we're the, yeah. We're we're small. Well, I guess sites and yeah. everything else. Yeah, yeah. Um. yeah. It's. It's interesting the development of sites and and what you do as far as how you pro how the, the processes that you go through to create new because how do you do that? They're they're getting more accurate, uh, but they're they're not exactly where we need it to go, but it's enough to get us a, a testing yeah. s you know sample to get rough numbers figured out. Yeah. Well, we're here. We're talking about sites. We're talking about development of sites with Zach over at Excess Sites. How you doing, man? Good. How's the show? National or Association of Sporting Goods Wholesalers show. This is really kind of the big first show after all that we've gone through the past year, year and a half. Um, how's the show going for you? Uh, it's good, man. It's nice and steady. It's great seeing old friends swinging by again, kind of seeing what's changed, you know, who's shifted around, yep. and, you know, the, the old standard that, <laughs> yeah, I've gotten an email from you. Well, I'm, I'm here now. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, I'm really alive. And that's that's one r real big reason why we like to get together is just the, the association and meeting like-minded people and connecting, you know, because, I mean, this is how we do business. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. We're still in here. Like, mm -hmm. we've, got to, we've got to do something. So now we're talking about sites. Excess sites, but that's not what this is. Uh, <laughs> so, no, sir. So let's start here because this is actually on the table. This is something that, honestly, you said you guys have been producing these for six years or so, roughly, um, but I was unaware of it. Like, And shame on me for not knowing because it's such a useful tool, but this is a new generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell, walk us through it. So uh, this is our second-gen AR block. Uh <clears throat> So uh, the the top and bottom can fit uh, an AR-15, and then actually that's the AR-10 on that side. Yep. Excuse me. Uh, well, I took this off. Oh, I, oh, actually, I took it off. Oh no, we're <laughs> actually we're getting this side's the AR-15. Uh, that comes out. It's just okay. screwed in, and then that side's our AR-10. Um, so you can lock in your your uppers and uh, torque in your barrels and hand guards and all that stuff. And the new addition is you can also use it for your lower receivers, too. And that's, that's huge for these guys building these guns because that's what a lot of guys are gravitating towards is, you know, whether they're a first-time gun owner or they're just buying their first lower, a lot of guys, you know, they don't know what they need. Um, and now with the addition of the AR-10, mm -hmm. that's huge. Yep. For guys to be able to use one block, then that's what you're going for. Yeah, and so uh, we shoot, uh, now XS shoots competitively in uh, IDPA, 3-gun. I mean, we, we get around quite a bit, and so uh, our guys are always burning through barrels. Uh, right. And so this, this is a very utilitarian tool that helps them quite a bit and just toning down some of the options in the toolbox, a little less thing, a uh, little less to keep track of. Right. Well, and that's one thing, like, that as gun builders, like, that we have to pay attention to is what's out there that can make our lives a little bit easier. And this is a great example of that because you got both options covered. Mm -hmm. um, let's go into sites. Let's go into, you know, give us a little background on excess sites. Uh, you guys are located out of the Dallas Fort Worth area, um, which we got to tour your facilities a few years ago and they were beautiful, but you say you guys are starting to grow a lot and they're getting a little bit cramped over there in the DFW area. <laughs> Yeah, we're uh, we're fighting for you know our marketing room at this point because we're trying <laughs> to take it and uh, put our new operations manager in there. So we're we're getting pretty nasty with really? the the, the meetings. Are lately. you having to like tape off your area and? Oh yeah, <laughs> like this is mine. Don't touch the tripod. <laughs> <laughs> but so what else? Like as far as site development, what are you guys coming out with new? So uh, we just launched our the Hellcat uh, OSP. Uh, optic uh, height uh, sites um, in our big dots and our, our three dot sites as well uh, on the we just launched our Henry uh, lever rail okay so that's going to cover just the 45 uh, 70 uh, uh, models for now okay uh, and we're, we're just starting to bri uh, bridge that gap with Henry's yeah and then uh, well we have Henry's they have such a wide variety of offerings that it's hard to lock down that lever like one size does not fit all. Yeah, and uh, 
you know, we've been making the Marlin rails for right twenty plus years. <laughs> uh, Which is another thing a lot of people do not know. Oh yeah, no, it's a lot of them have our rails on it. Uh, so so we finally ended up uh, phasing into the Henrys, and it's just a a different mix. The mounting systems are a little okay. bit different, and uh, so we've always had the the op the rail portion of it solved. It's the uh, the backup ghost rings that go with it. Right. And due to the different mounting, uh, the front sight heights just keep going up and up and up. Okay. And so we we typically, in our testing, we'll test three to five different hunting uh, brands of ammunition and kind of see where the happy medium is. And we had sights uh, for uh, some of those rifles pushing over half an inch tall. And so. Oh, no kidding. Uh, you know, lever, lever guns always have tall sights, but we were starting to hit right. that that point of that's going to start catching on a lot of things right. and doing more harm than good. Well, and like, you know, saddlebags, stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. that gets a problem. And a lot of guys, you know, may not be riding horses and carrying guns and stuff like that. But for those that do that, that's an issue. Yeah. So, uh, it was finding the happy mix. And so right now we have the rail by itself and then we have, uh, our lowest ghost rings possible that can be added in conjunction with the rail. Okay. But we uh, we're not commercially offering a set of just dedicated ghost rings for it, just due to the the heights a little bit too too far past our comfort zone. Okay, so talk about the big dot size because I, I think that's one of the one of the big draws, especially for excess sites, are the big dots, mm -hmm. and that's and you guys offer all different colors and combinations, and we talked a little bit too about oh, this is a whole nother topic we're going to have to have to hit on is the different options you guys are offering as far as like uh suppressor height sites to view through the windows of your red dots mm -hmm. uh but talk a little bit about the big dots and the line that you're running there so uh <clears throat> we started out just making big easy to see sites it, it really started out from you know what happens in a gunfight and that right. uh first person defender you guys have, have seen it and it's the adrenaline spikes yep. you focus on your target <laughs> And you're, by the way, you're also moving, both parties are. And so what we've seen is uh, a lot of, you know, you get fixated on that target oh, yeah. quickly. And so we're trying to make easy to see sighting systems that get you that nice blurry dot right, right in front of you intuitively. And that's where we use the open notch V. So you have a bigger view of your target yep. down range. And we are, we are all about the front sight. Well, and I mean, as Chris Serino on FPD says, grip sights trigger. You know, if you don't, if you don't have a good grip, if you can't see your sights, he's don't shoot. Like that's not that's not the right moment. You got to pick up that front sight because you're liable for every round down range, and that's something that we see all the time on FPD. Uh, we say, okay, what did you see? Well, I just saw my attacker coming. Did you see your front sights? And all the time, I mean, when you look at factory sights, they're they blend into the gun so well. Um, a lot of companies do. Um, and so they're, you can't distinguish them. And so, yeah, you're, you're getting blinded by and fixated on your target rather mm -hmm. than your front sight. And that's where I see the big dot becoming like highly valuable. Yeah. And we're, we're really trying to cover the, the multiple light spectrum. So it's not just, you know, low light, you know, and that complete darkness, it's bright light settings. And so a lot of, you know, we, we've, We've run a, a lot off the, the science, you know, done before us, but, you know, we use tennis ball yellow, the most yeah. visible color <laughs> to the eye. And and so there there's a lot going on there that we're trying to cover. It's not just night sights. Right. Um, plays a big portion in it, but it's it's helping cover those other spectrums that help you out too. Um, and then, you know, in conjunction of, of uh, you know, our big, the big dot itself, you know, we have our own tritium license now, so we use brighter tritium okay. in the front sight versus the rear sight. So that way, you know, we, we try and keep less distraction back there as right. much as human. So you're possible. really drawing that eye in is what your the, your mm -hmm. goal is. And yes, so sir. that that makes a lot more sense now that now that you say it, that's why a lot of guys will black out mm -hmm. that rear sight. Well, and we see it often uh, on the three dot sight pictures. So we launched mm -hmm. our R three D line. And so just having those two dots that much closer to your eye right. will appear much brighter. And so that's where we had to really uh, work with our suppliers to find a better uh, front sight option that was brighter. So it's, it's a, it's Talk a shifting mix. Talk about the new RD3 sights. 
Um, you know, so those are our traditional three dots. Uh, we, we still use a nice big front sight, not as big as our big dots or anything. Right. Um, but with our notch on post sights, we really focus on the gap in the okay. rear sight. That, that's the science of it. Get more light around there. And so that is just what helps you kind of nestle that, thing, that front post and that notch faster. Right. Um, some of them are uh, optic heights, too, right. to help uh, serve as backup irons. Um, but that, that is the real science there with them. Right. So. Well, we kind of talked about a little bit beforehand, and this was a, an interesting subject that you brought up, was um, choosing and selecting the right color. Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't think about it, but there is a, often a red tint to these red dot systems. Um, and you guys probably out there probably already knew that, but I did not. Um, and so selection of your color really makes a difference. And what are you guys doing there? Honestly, there, there's no great answer because there's... <laughs> oh, come on. Zach, <laughs> we are getting down to the nuts and bolts of this. We need hard answers right now. The people demanded it. So we've started offering different mixes. Uh, so there's green, yellow, blue, and red tints of glass. Right. And so we started honestly offering the options of white, yellow, and orange. Uh, to offset. Yeah. Okay. So if you use a, uh, you know, I believe uh, the, the RMRs are red tinted. And uh, if you use uh, one of those with uh, our orange front sight on top of the red dot reticle yeah. as well, it's, it's a lot of orange going on there. Yeah. And, you know, our irons are meant to serve as backups and also to help you find that reticle a little bit faster right. through that window. And so... If you're mixing shades, it can just add areas for things to go right. Around. Make it slower. Well, slower and non-distinguishable. And you, you want to be as precise as possible. And then if that red dot, for some odd reason, goes down, which I really don't see that that often, um, you want to be able to pick that dot up quickly. Yeah. And we also see it, uh, uh, a lot of people are using the irons to help them find that reticle, too. Okay. Um, it's it's just an extra aid for uh, off the draw. You know, you didn't get that yep. best draw stroke, and so you're you're getting it back in the window. And we typically see people find their irons a little bit faster for that first shot. Okay. And then that red dot starts stepping in. Really? Yeah. That's so. sad. That's an interesting. Do it kind of you're reversing course almost. And I, and I know you know Chris runs uh, runs a lot of red dots now. He and does. So, uh, and that's just a lot of time and training, but mm -hmm. so we we see a mix of it. You're, you're either at the, the high end or the low end of it, and yeah. so we we're working with a, a lot of moving variables. There. Yeah. Um, beforehand, too, we were talking a little bit, and I asked you a, kind of a pointed question, and it's kind of hard to put you on the spot, um, but prepare these guys that are they're installing an excess site. So they go out, they buy an excess site, they say, "Man, I need to pick up that dot bigger." Like, it needs to be there, so I'm going to pick up a big dot. What type of, like, installation tips do you have for these guys? Because we've both been there. I think a lot of us have been there where the installation process is sometimes one of the more infuriating parts of sites. Oh, definitely. Uh, it's it's a challenge at times. Uh, you know, it, it gets easier, obviously. Uh, the more guns you own, the more times you do well, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and you just and you always want to find that right system that works for your gun and yourself. So what we've done is uh, we actually promote you to install them yourself if if you feel you know you have the mechanical capabilities right. to do so. And so we try to cover the budget uh, of the spectrum. So if if you have a a vice in your garage and you can do it with a hammer and punch. Right. You don't need a, a lot of crazy tools to do it. It's just time and patience. And then we only that's go something that us got. That's something that a lot of folks just don't have. A bigger hammer is not going to solve this one. <laughs> See, that's tried. what I go. That's what I go to. That's my first step. Oh, it's not going, it's not going in right. All right, bigger hammer. Yeah, the bigger. science hammer is not going to get you there. Uh, <laughs> tried it and failed. <laughs> Scratch the slide here or there. Right. Uh, and that's that's the worst <laughs> thing is when you're really trying to be meticulous and you want it to look good just as you bought it, um, and then that happens. And you mar the slide or you break your sight. Um, but, yeah, so what what would you recommend these guys do? So I, I recommend, honestly, you do it, do it yourself because it teaches yeah. you a great skill to learn your firearm. And also, you know, if it, if it is a, a your carry gun, you know, that thing's going to get scratched up a little bit. So don't be too scared off from right. it. But you definitely want to you definitely want to you know not scratch it if you, if you don't have to with a steel punch or anything right. or brass. Um, so where we drive to is a uh, 
we have our our installation methods for uh, installing them in a vise, and step right. one is get get painters tape or, or some type of protection it around it. Yep, and okay. so you can hit your air, you know the protect the area right. that you don't want. Go slow and steady, and hold that punch on the dovetails. Okay, Instead on the dovetails. Not Instead on, on the not on the site yeah. or the blade. Mm -hmm. So that's when you'll see you know sight snap and all that other fun stuff. And then uh, as far as uh, sight pushers go. They're, they're great. They work well. Uh, they have their downsides, too. So if you don't get that uh, sight in the track perfectly, right. then you push on it with uh, those, uh, you know, the block, it can cant it upwards. And I've had that happen, <laughs> which is that's part of the being patient process and learning, you know, what this is doing to this site, you know. And most of it's fixable. So, you know, stop. You know, when you see that thing go crooked, you know, back it out. Take the top off, take a hammer and punch, and tap it back down. Go back and try again. Yeah. And if you still get the same result, stop, drive it out. Yeah. File it down, and guess what? You're back at file to fit a little right. bit. And then go in from the other side and see your results from okay. there. And typically, you'll get there from at that point. Yeah. It shouldn't be that difficult. But, okay, let's say you got a guy like me, buy says sites, I mess it up. I mean, am I just I go to go buy some more? No. So XS, uh, uh, we offer a, a full warranty on that. So we have a, a no questions asked warranty, um, and so we typically only see sites be broken is during installation. Right. And so if you snap that thing off, call us. We'll send you a new one. We also offer our 30 day satisfaction guarantee. So we we found uh, now that we offer all these color options, a lot of people have. Uh, a slight degree of colorblindness. About okay. five percent of the population is colorblind, and so they don't see the orange that well. And okay. so we'll we'll send them the other color and swap them out right. and stuff. Because so. what they might see in the store or online mm -hmm. is going to pop a little bit different depending on their setup and how their eyes adjust yeah. to it. Yeah, and you know the the retina display on your screen or you know what, right. Yeah, all that stuff goes in the play there. So we we're you know we're a small family owned business, and so we really try to own the solution from start to finish. Right. And honestly, have your back on it. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to have a bright set of sights that you can see. Yep. And that you can trust. Yep. Uh, okay, where can we find out more from you guys? Uh, honestly, man, you can go to our website, social media. They're everywhere. Call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give them a call. Zach will answer and he'll tell no, no, you no, we, everything you want to know. Uh, so we uh, we have our, our gunsmiths are on, uh, manning the phones. So, oh, no kidding. Yeah, they are our customer service. So if you have issues, just call us. Monday through Friday, and we'll actually we'll walk you through stuff. For too. sites. Mm -hmm. For sites. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> For sites. So if you have a regular gunsmithing question about sites, you can call Excess Sites. They'll get you taken care of. And don't forget the block because uh, you're going to have to need one of those if you're building that AR or AR-10. So, Zach, thanks for joining us, man. Uh, NHGW Show 2021. We'll be right back with a little bit more. Thanks for watching Gun Talk Live. For more great gun content, subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. You can always watch the Gun Talk channels on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon. And of course, you can always find us at guntalk.com. Thanks for watching.